Hey friends, good morning. It is Saturday, seed starting with your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler and glad you're here. So I've literally just whisked in the door. I got a little um, tied up taking care of my seedlings this morning and time got away from me, but I'm glad I found my way here in time. So is it, we're going to over a hundred today here in Southeastern Virginia. And so it's an indoor kind of day and I'm glad you're here with me. So let's talk, let me tell you what I'm going to talk about today. Of course, we're going to be doing our weekly sunflower sowing. And we are also um, going to take a look at some soil blocked plants. And I'm going to show you our first cool flower that we always have to start really early um, this time of year. And there's still time for you to start it too, if you want to. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I am gonna show you some soil block seedlings at different stages. And um, so I wanna tell you about a couple things before we kind of dive into that. First, out of the gate, I don't know if you have um, joined us there or heard about it yet. Um, but I have a new live show on Fridays. It's called the Gardener's Workshop Live Show, Live Shop. That's what it's called, Live Shop. And we have our own phone app. You can find our phone app at, at your app store. Um, just search Gardener's Workshop Live Shop and join me on Fridays, 12 noon Eastern time. It's about an hour long show. We broadcast it here from the farm. And this is just some of what we talk about. Um, on that show. What I basically, the point of this show was we're always hearing from people. I'm not sure what to put seeds to start or when to start them or they have questions. So I am actually sharing our weekly harvest with you and giving you the 411 about more information and showing like, I mean, these are the sunflowers we're starting today, friends. We started these together 60 days ago. Um, and look at that grass. Um, and so those are the things that I'm talking about and kind of getting people ready for the next season. In addition to that, um, there's special offers and bundles and even new introductory products. That's kind of how we bring new products on board over on our big website, thegardenersworkshop.com. So here's the way it works. And I'm telling you this because we've done something special because of my whoopsie yesterday during the show. So we know a lot of people cannot watch the show live at 12 noon. So we keep the specials. Um, yes, I will be answering questions. Just post your questions. And at the end, I'll be coming circling back for those. Um, so the way it works is I have these special offers. It changes from week to week. We do all kinds of dream up all kinds of good stuff. Well, those offers are only good and available until normally 8 a.m. the next morning, which would have been this morning at 8 a.m. Well, yesterday, y'all, I forgot one of the biggest specials that we were offering. It is free shipping on seed only orders. That means if you go get the app and go in there and shop and you only purchase seeds, it's free shipping. And that works out really well because people buy seeds every week as they see the blooms, right? That's kind of why we did that. Well, I forgot to mention that yesterday. So because of that, we have extended all the offers until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is July 24th of 2022. So you can get the app, go in and watch the replay um, or just shop, whichever you want to do. And there's a lot of great bundles in there. There's a soul blocking bundle with free cool flower seeds, natural Kit has a little discount. There's another new bundle with, you know, the marker pen I'm talking about all the time, this and some of the wooden markers. So it's worth going over there. And because of my bumble yesterday, we've extended it another 24 hours. So before we, I'm going to get these soil blocks off my table here. So I'm going to show you for these first, just in case you're not familiar, soil blocking is the way that we start most of our seeds. Not all of them. We also use plug trays, as you'll see me do here with sunflowers this morning. Um, but let's first take a look at this. These are basils. These were born 714. What is today? The 23rd. So what does that make them? Nine days old? They're older than that. Nine days old. So this is basil. 
that will be um, planted out probably in two, two more weeks, probably. Um, but this is a hundred small blocks on this tray. You'll find these trays over in that app and guess what the special is on them. The price is normal, but the shipping is reduced. Oftentimes when we feature products on the live show, we give you reduced shipping if, as if you would have bought it over on the website. Um, <clears throat> so we bite the bullet and pay a portion of that shipping. And look at these zinnias. These were started on the 11th. That's the same day, right? No, those were the 14th. These are the 11th. These are zinnias on the, this is the large tray. And these guys are just heading out to be hardened off. They've been in the grow room. This is six, sorry, yes, yeah, 60 blocks. And these guys are going to go sit out on the porch in a protected with the carport over them. They get morning and afternoon sun and heat and wind. And these will be planted out in the garden probably the end of probably next Thursday. Um, so this is just a super space savvy way, friends, to start seeds. These trays have no drainage holes. So you can do it anywhere in your home. I mean, I do it in a grow room. Um, you can do it in a spare bedroom. And then look at these are the marigolds. This is our last planting. These are the giant mix. And these were started on the 11th. And these are the same as the zinnias. They're on their way out. Um, the little basils will go back in the grow room for another week. But look at these guys. Totally and completely awesome. So if you're on the fence about soil blocking, um, then... You can find my hat. This is my hat, literally, all that I wear. Um, if you're on the fence blocking, one of the bundle specials over on the app is the DIY kit. And that means the DIY is that you make your own blocking mix at home. It has the nutrient, the recipe, which means you put your compost and your peat moss or um, cocoa fiber with the recipe to make your own and I'm um, telling you, it is a great way to start seeds. And then I want to show you, lastly, y'all, we have so many flowers around here that I'm having trouble. And then I want to show you, this is the cool, the first cool flower that we've started this year. And I don't want to confuse everybody, but Sweet William is a huge cash crop for flower farmers. And it's a great garden plant to boot. But there are so many different types or families of cool flower of um, sweet William. And I typically grow two. One is called the Amazon series. And that Amazon series, you can start the seed today and it'll bloom in 16 weeks. It needs no cold treatment. It's not a biennial. Super quick, fast. Love it. It's our top seller in our top 10. Um, but there's one that has to be treated a little bit differently, but we love it so much and it's called Electron. Electron is more of a biennial. That means that it has to have a cold period at a certain stage in its life before it will produce blooms. So if you were to try to plant Electron like a normal cool flower just later in the fall, it wouldn't bloom next year. You'd be so disappointed as I have done so much in the past, right? So, Electron should be started, according to Dave Dowling, who is my, you know, consultant on all things wondering about timing, um, the early August is when it needs to be started. And that is just such a tough time to start cool flowers because it is still so hot outside and my grow room's hot, which explains the sporadic germination. Do you see these guys sprouted first? And then there was another layer and then a lot more. Now the rest of them are starting to come on. And it's just because the air temperature is too warm. So you'll find Dianthus Electron and the Amazon actually over on our website. Electron is gorgeous. It's bicolor, meaning two colors on each flower. <clears throat> Super tall. A fake. Florists really love this because it's very similar. It's one that they buy and get shipped in. But your quality will be so much better. So these guys were just sown on the 14th um, and they'll be about four to five weeks old. And then we'll plant them strategically out in the garden so that they will not be happy when we first plant them, but they're going to grow into their season. Right. So cool flowers is ramping up. Um, if you don't know about cool season, hardy annuals, friends, you have got to get on board. Um, it is the way to have a spring like no other time. Um, cool season hardy annuals. There are so many flowers. My book, 
Cool Flowers covers 30 of those flowers and explains the whole concept that y'all, our grandmas used to do. I didn't make this up, um, but it'll help guide you. And the other thing that I want to add before I jump on our sunflowers is I have taken a little hiatus in July and August um, from my Wednesday lives, which is Ask a Flower Farmer on Instagram and Clubhouse. I'll be back on Clubhouse in the fall. But ask a flower, um, ask a flower farmer on my Instagram account. We have guest takeovers. Last week, Daniel Shavy of Petal Pickers. I mean, you can go in and watch the replay, y'all. And he's being really good about answering questions, better than I am actually, that get posted afterwards. Well, this coming week, we're kind of modifying. It's going to be called Ask a Florist. If you are a flower farmer that sells to florists. This Wednesday at 1130 Eastern time is your opportunity to ask Ellen Frost, our local color flowers design studio florist who only uses local flowers. She is like every flower farmer's dream. Every flower farmer needs an Ellen in their town. And that's what Ellen's trying to do. Basically, she's trying to teach florists everywhere how to connect with farmers. But you have a chance this Wednesday to pick her brain. So go for it. Um, and, um, sorry, I just looked, I looked over at the questions. We are, I am so hot and tired. It has been a very, very long, incredibly busy week, super hot. We had our company picnic here last night, which you have to go over to Instagram stories and look, we had so much fun. We had a scavenger hunt, uh, we had great food and it was so much fun, but I am pooped and I recorded two podcasts this morning. So I'm burning the candle. I can't wait until like 1230. I am crashing until tomorrow morning. Um, you see, I totally lost my train of thought, y'all. So Ask a Flower Farmer is Ask a Florist this week, which I believe, where is the calendar? That would be July 27th with Ellen Frost. So check it out. All right, friends. So let's get to our sunflowers. Speaking of sunflowers, look at these beauties. This is... Um, the gold light that I love so much. This is like the most universal. This is good for any season. This is so spectacular in very early spring, right? Um, because this will go with anything. And then there's our standard orange back there. But do you see that grass up there? That is limelight millet. You'll find the seed, all of the seeds to all of these over on our website. That limelight millet, we sick when I was in production, high production, we planted um, a tray a week of millet, of that millet, um, because of its green color and it went with everything um, every week. And we put three seeds into every cell, and that's the way we planted them. And we planted it like Lysianthus, eight rows to a bed six inches apart in the row. Um, but they're spectacular, super spectacular. And you need to be thinking fall. I mean, this, I wish I had the, the bouquet. Suzanne made two bouquets yesterday out of our harvest for some people that were here working. And they like screamed late summer, fall. And y'all, you have to think about these things. And it may be too late for this year, but you need to write on your calendar for next year, for the fall, the things you want to have. And then you have to figure out when you're supposed to start it. You know, you got to get your dream, the goal, and then work backwards. All right, I'll get off my horse now. This is why I did um, two podcasts this morning. It's almost like I'm on a um, bit of a surge here. All right, so let's talk about sunflowers. A lot of people are falling off the sunflower freight train right now because they're hot, they're tired. Maybe they aren't selling all their flowers. And, you know, they, they are just kind of getting overwhelmed. But let me tell you something. Now, so these pro cuts and sun fills that we're going to start today, what is today? July 22nd to August. to se So these are going to start blooming near the end, like September 20th or so. And so you need to be thinking everything from here on out should be able to accommodate your fall colors. And I've got orange. I'm also starting this week. Um, not only the um, sun filled green, but also the sun filled purple, which I have not started, but I'll show you this. We used these on our show yesterday. This, this is what you, you grow sun fill for, friends. Not a big old sunflower like that. See this bud in the middle? 
See all these sepals? That's that layer. It almost looks like a succulent. This is what you want to have one of to add to every one of your bouquets. I mean, it's called filler. And it's, this, this one is the green. So you can see that the center, I'm trying to see, the center right there is green. So this is a super great all summer when you're trying to have bright, colorful, you want to pop the colors up. This is what does it. I'm going to be starting the purple today, which has brushes of darker colors and the foliage is a little darker. And I see Jesse is posting the links to the seeds that I'm mentioning so you can actually find those easier. And the Sunfill actually comes in a um, mix. So you can don't have to buy both colors. Um, but I like being able to control what color I'm starting. So today we're starting with the green and purple Sunfill. And I'm starting um, the orange upright. See how these guys over here, sorry, y'all, this, this thing is opposite. It makes me crazy. These oranges are all facing you all. Well, I want some horizon. Those are the orange that face straight up. They make bouquet making, I mean, a blooming dream. My sister would love nothing more to walk in when we were making 250 bouquets a week just for supermarkets. That didn't include farmer's markets and our 23 florists that we sold bunches to. There's nothing better than having like five buckets of mixed marigolds, couple buckets of horizon orange sunflowers, three buckets of regular orange sunflowers, and a ton of coxcomb um, to make her bouquet making a whiz. I mean, we could make, I mean, like 70 an hour easily. Um, and anyway, so don't fall off the wagon just because you think it's hot. Now's the time to get back on. All right. So first things first, let me see if I can get y'all to see this a little bit better. So this is the 128 plug tray, which you'll find these over at thegardenersworkshop.com. And I also want to mention that um, if you're one of our online students, we just love it when y'all put the sunflower emoji up. That helps other people that might be thinking about joining one of our courses or purchasing one um, to reach out to you. I mean, we just love it when our folks share word of mouth. That's the best ever, right? All right, so this is the 128 plug tray and this soil mix that's in here is just 50-50 mix of potting, any potting soil, nothing special, and compost mixed together. And that's what we have filled the tray up with. Now, it's really important for us anyway, so I would guess it's important for most people to really ID what sunflowers you are starting, you know, have the name and the date. That really helps you, especially if you get a lot of trays. Think about, we plant the sunflowers when they're three weeks old. When we were starting, oh my gosh, can't even hardly say it, 10 trays just like this a week for 26 weeks, we would have, I mean, a quarter of an acre in sunflower transplant trays waiting to get planted, right? You really need to know the date so you keep those together because they kind of start all looking the same. So I always have to look again, 723, y'all, I am. It is so thick and humid outside. I am, I'm in air conditioning, but it's hot in here. I am perspiring. I will tell you, it is running down my back and my face. All right, more than you needed to know, I'm sure. All right, we're going to make this sun fill purple. Then we're going to do sun fill green. And so I am using our pen, which I absolutely adore y'all. This is made for outdoors. You'll find it inside the app. It's part of the bundle this week, but you can always find it um, on our website. And um, it with, I mean, this tape will, we use masking tape. That's all this is sticks to our trays holds. I mean, this will still be on there, you know, months from now. Um, and what else? And so we're starting that and that. And then we're starting Horizon. And this is 723. And then the other one we're starting is Gold Light. Y'all, I'm just so in love with that. That's the green center with the gold right there. <clears throat> Stiff necks, neutral. You can use it for, with anything. All right. So we have that made. And 
I got to get my top, y'all. I dropped it. You don't put your top back on, it'll dry up. All right. So I'll go ahead and stick these on. So I hope everybody's trying to stay cool. Um, we started harvesting on Thursday. We harvest only on Thursdays now for our shopping show. And I started at quarter to six a.m. Um, and it's light here then. I could have actually started at 515 because, you know, think about all the things that you have to do before you can harvest. You got to get your buckets ready. You should not be washing buckets the morning of harvest, y'all. That's a job done in an afternoon previously, right? Um, so I'm just tearing this off. And each variety gets four rows and a row has eight. So um, this is really perfect for our um, just each week for our show. Or if you're, you know, making both supermarket, not supermarket, but bouquet subscriptions, this is just really the perfect way to do it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Y'all, I can't even count. I'm so tired. I mean, is it no wonder I forgot to mention about the free shipping on the live show inside the app yesterday? Not surprising to me at all. I mean, I didn't even realize it until last night. Okay. All right. So I have put my tape on and I will talk about the whole sunflower deal here as we are sowing the seeds. And then I'll answer questions after I'm done here. So if you sow sunflowers of the same variety each week, then that means that you're going to have sunflowers blooming of that variety every single week because they're on a timeline, right? We do vary it up a little bit and change colors as well as we, in addition to pro, these are pro cuts. Pro cut is the series that we plant. We love pro cuts because most of them have stiff necks. And um, there's 14 different colors and they are just super. I just dropped one. We'll find it later. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to put. So what's next? Sunfield green. Y'all, I'm sorry. I have to stop and look at what I'm doing or I'm going to screw this up. So these guys can go over there. Um, so we start sunflowers of the same variety same color, at least one of the same color each week to keep your timing of having sunflowers for every single week. This is how, if you want to commit to bouquet subscriptions every week, um, how you know you're going to have three to five sunflowers to poof it up every single week. It's like buying yourself insurance. I can't tell you how rewarding it is how about that? Y'all had exactly enough seeds and I'm out. All right. What's next? Horizon. Um, so starting them every week. Um, and, you know, you can change up the varieties if you want to have diversity as long as the days are the same. So these are all pro cuts and they're 55 to 60 days from seed to bloom. Well, sun fill which is another variety, which is that one I just showed you that we grow for filler, is the same. It's got that same timeline. So it doesn't, because you have to think about, it'll screw your bed up. You know, we like cutting, we like, it looks like we have mowed a bed down. We start at the head, we harvest this week's, and then we harvest next week's, and then we harvest the next week's each week. And, oh, I'm doing too many, y'all. That's what happens when I start running my mouth. Stand by. All right. These are horizon. Um, so you have to think about that. So you wouldn't use some sunflowers. I'm test growing one now um, and it's 110 days. That's enough to make me not want to sell it or to grow it. You know, so you have those every sunflower is different. Now, this is gold light. Um, so you have to keep your eye on that. So by starting the sunflowers each week, that means you'll have sunflowers each week. And I can't tell you how painful it is when you come to the week that you skipped 60 days later and all of a sudden you're addicted to the sunflowers and so are your customers and all of a sudden you don't have any. So you got to get, get your program going here. 
So we sow these seeds as you're going to see me do here in just a second and or plant them. And <clears throat> so now I'm just taking my fingers and pushing the seed about halfway down into the cell. Sunflowers germinate best when they... See, I knew I dropped one. We're going to have an oddball there. Um, when they're covered. So you need to push them down in. And then when I take this tray into the grow room and water it well, deeply, with a watering can with um, a sprinkler head on it, then I'm going to pop it. That's going to wash the soil off the side, the walls of this tray. And then we are going to have covered sunflower seeds. Then I'm popping this up onto a seedling heat mat to give it consistent heat. Yes, friends, even with this crazy weather, it cools down at night. We know for a fact that the sunflowers pop quicker, faster, and more uniform when you give them uniform 24-7 heat on a seedling heat mat. Once 50% or more show signs of life, they start to crack. You see the necks coming up. You move them from the heat mat to either whatever your setup is to grow lights, if that's what you're doing, or I move them out onto our porch into full blast in the sun. And I really have to protect them from birds and varmints. And I do that with either row cover or putting bulb crates upside down. And we grow them until they're two to three weeks old. The way I, we know when to plant them is when you pull on the stem and the whole cell easily comes up which is usually for us at two and a half weeks, that's when it's time to plant them. Now, if you're having trouble getting a great root system on your um, transplants, it's a lack of heat, friends. That's the other thing. A seedling heat mat really gets the, it just pops the seed and gets those roots to grow quickly. Um, so we have found that really fixes that problem. And <clears throat> so we move them off the heat mat out on the porch and we plant them. We plant them into beds that have been prepared with dry organic fertilizer. Sunflowers, while they will grow in very lean, poor quality soil, they love food and water. And when you give it to them, they grow faster. And that's not a bad thing when you're in production. So we prepare, we add the dry organic fertilizer and you can find what I use on my website in the store. We sell it. Um, and we prepare the bed. We do not use any film. We do not use the biodegradable film because think about it, friends. These plants are already through a third of their life when you plant them. And so we plant them. We don't even put irrigation down. We hand water them with a wand. We get rain so regular here in southeastern Virginia that irrigation is not necessary. But if you don't get regular water, then you need to provide water however you do that. We do not use flower support netting, well, but they will benefit from flower support netting. If you're a small grower or a home gardener, it is more important to you to not lose any sunflowers. So 100% I would recommend using flower support netting. We don't do it or we stopped doing it when we went into high production. We were planting 1,200 sunflowers a week. We didn't have the manpower to be able to put up all that netting, all those stakes, and even more so to take all that down. So I knew it was a calculated risk and we still, so we still don't support sunflowers and we lose some every single week, but that's our calculated risk. We're willing to do that. But if you're a small farmer, small grower, or a home gardener, 100% recommend that you support them because if you only plant 25 and you lose 12 of them, you know, you're out of the luck or there's a chance you could lose all of them. Um, so definitely use flower support and friends until we go back until we harvest them. And here you go. So I was going to find, this is really the perfect size sunflower. See how small these are and how do you control size by spacing? Almost all sunflowers will get bigger. If you, sorry, I had water and everything. I ran out of the house, left my notes. And I left my water sitting in the house. Um, this sunflower would be this big had they been planted 12 or 24 inches apart. 
These were planted as I prescribed earlier, five rows across the 30 inch bed, or did I even say that? So when we plant them, we plant, our beds are 30 inches wide. We put five rows across the bed. We use the flower support netting as a planting grid. And then we plant a sun, them six inches apart. And I will give you this tip. Um, and then I'm gonna move on to our questions. Um, <clears throat> During the long days of summer, which we're in right now, you don't necessarily want to do this now, but back in May and in April, the long days of July and late June make blooms get bigger. Even though you're spacing them identically the same, the blooms will get bigger. What I have done in years past to continue getting, this is the perfect size bouquet making sunflower. Your commercial customers will flip over this because it is so usable. Sunflowers last so long. I mean, look at them. They're just absolutely gorgeous, right? So during those days in May, I would put two and sometimes even three seeds in every cell. Do not thin them and plant those cells on the same spacing. Don't pull the plants apart you're making them tighter and that keeps them this size at this time of the year. Cause some of ours, like, look at this, look how big these are. Here's one. Look how big that is. That is really unusable. I mean, a florist occasionally would love to have that, but that is not the one they want to have 12 bunches of every single week, week after week. Um, so that's the 911 on that. All right, friends, I'm tired. So let me get rid of this and I'm gonna look at your questions. All right, to make sure all my seed packs are zipped up here. All right, let me bring you over closer here. In that limelight, I will tell you that um, I have taken more pictures of that bunch of limelight. It is just so very, very gorgeous. Um, and if you had that every single week, you'd be pretty happy with yourself. So I see I have all of our friends on here from California and Kansas all over. Bonnie, have you suspended Clubhouse Wendy's? I haven't been able to find you on Clubhouse the past two weeks. Bonnie, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm just taking a hiatus until the fall. Um, I'm working on a super big project of which I can't give you the details of yet, um, but I just had to clear one day. I mean, I need more than a day, but I've just cleared my Wednesdays. And so um, I'll be back on Clubhouse in the fall. And that's why my Instagram is actually having a takeover. Um, so Bonnie, I will be back. And thank you so much for asking. And Virginia from Oregon. Becky, I bought last week's and this week's bundles. I'm on my way. Oh, Becky. So Becky has been on our um, show shopping app. And so again, friends, if you have not checked out, it's just, I mean, it, it's still, I just can't believe it. I'll show y'all. Can y'all see it? There's our little app right there. Um, so you can go to your phone app store and um, bring it up. And so you can go into the app. And so there's yesterday's show and there's all the past week shows and there's a shop. Wait a minute, y'all. So you can shop all, and the bundles come right up and see, here's the soil blocking bundle from yesterday. And um, so this week, so I, we've extended the offers until tomorrow morning, Sunday at 8 a.m. That means you can, if it's a seed only order, you get free shipping. But the other stuff that's in there that was featured has reduced shipping. And I um, can't tell you how, I mean, Suzanne and I are just really, really love doing it. All right, Jessica, question. I'm trying to make plans for the 2023 season in a field I've just gained access to on four miles away. I'm in zone seven and wonder if you have any advice on what would be easy to grow and not grow, meaning they don't need my immediate attention all day long. Bulb, bulbs, cool and warm season. Um so first off, um, I'm not a, I'm not your bulb person to talk to. Um, the podcast I did this morning that won't come out for probably three weeks or something um, was about all the things I wished I'd have known 
when I started that I know today. And um, one of them is sticking to the basics and starting really simply. And so Jessica, my advice to you, first off, would be to 100% check out my flower farming school, the basics, annual crops, marketing, and more. It is all about build it, building a strong foundation of a cut flower business, making some money <laughs> instead of spending all your money all the time, making a little bucks, getting some customers, learn how to sell. And I'll tell you what I said on that podcast I did this morning, that people focus my recommendation is flower farming is really a 12 month business, whether you're not, you're not harvesting 12 months, you're not planting 12 months, but it is a 12 month business. And my recommendation is that you spend 80% of that 12 months marketing and figuring out how to sell your flowers. 20% of the time should be focused on what your question is about to me. And I know that all of us, me included, it's the complete opposite. We spend 80%, if not more, of our time focusing on what to grow and how, you know, and all that. Um, but there's other things to be done. And starting with annuals, cool season and warm season is the low investment, biggest bang for your buck, allows you to screw up and learn how to grow and learn how to sell and to find customers. Um, Jessica, I would recommend my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, which is really about a three season cutting garden really talks about the way that I farm and garden, but it has my 10 workhorses of each group, 10 warm, 10 cools. Um, that would be a great place for you to start. So a Facebook user asks, when do you start the Sweet William Amazon? So that's a really great, great question. So Amazon, it's, Amazon is a series. There's three colors. There's Rose Magic, which is our number one seller of the Sweet Williams. It's pink and white kind of mixed up. Um, there's purple and there's cherry. And I think they have one called Neon, but it's just a mix of the cherry and the red. Um, if you're selling to florists, you don't want to mix anything, right? Um, so Sweet Williams, the Sweet William Amazon series, I start in the fall, like under the cool flower concept. You know, we have transplants to go into the ground six weeks before my first expected frost. You know, that's the target usually. But I also succession plant Amazon. I will plant because our ground doesn't freeze here. Depends on how busy I am, how much space I have. But when we were in high production, you better believe I did this. Every four to six weeks after that first planting, I had more Amazon to go in the ground. But normally I would skip November and December just because we are so busy. But in January, I'm planting Amazon. I mean, we start it when we start our stock and all that stuff the first week of January. And then I start Amazon once a month up until, depending on, um, it's the claim with the Amazon series is that it performs in heat and it will but it gets shorter and shorter as it faces heat. And you really have to pay attention to irrigating. And I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at fussing over plants. So in my experience, we continue to succession plant monthly. So I plant it in the fall and then I plant it again in January, although I could plant it fall and then every month right up until probably um, April. And the ones in April that bloom much later in the season, they weren't the greatest, but I'll tell you what I learned about Sweet William. This is why it's such a very, very important crop. Um, your florist will buy it every time you have it um, because that is one of the crops that just looks horrible when they ship it in and it comes in a box and it's a great filler. And um, so that's why I'm struggling getting this electron started. But Amazon, you will just absolutely great. And thank you, Bonnie, for saying that. Um, that Daniel took over our Instagram this past week. Daniel Shavia, Petal Pickers. Y'all, you ought to check. You have to follow him on social media. Pat, Pat um, Daniel has grown his business in six years like nobody's tomorrow. Me and my house plants about to plan a succession of pro, pro cuts. Good for you. Telling you, friends, once you start... Um, 
planting sunflowers. But when you start harvesting those sunflowers, you realize why have I not been doing this all along? And Jesse has been kind enough to post some of the links that I mentioned. This millet, I'm going to bring this over for y'all to see. Y'all look at this stuff. This is just the best ever. I'm going to set it down. I want to show you um, because this was harvested for a photo shoot, we left it in the garden longer than we normally do. And so that's why, I mean, look, this is what it develops into. I mean, this I, your commercial customers would die for this. But this is how we really loved, well, back when we were doing high production bouquets, this is the stage that we like, actually before that, this to have a lime green spike, not to be draping so much yet, because it will continue to develop. To have this little lime green spike to add to your bouquet. My sister's dream was, you know, that list I was saying earlier that how she was so happy when we were making all those bouquets to have, you know, buckets of the Horizon, Pro Cut Horizon, Upright Orange, the Regular Orange, Marigolds, Coxcomb. Um, and to have two buckets of this that look like this, it's just the drape. I mean, this one isn't bad, but when they start draping, they're just kind of a problem to handle and to keep them from getting damaged. But that's the link for this limelight millet. I mean, this stuff, I'm taking this in my house. Um, it is just so very, very beautiful. So we have folks from all over um, and so, hi, welcome from Alberta. We have, you know, it's so funny that um, we were just talking in a staff meeting on Thursday that um, Dave and my, Dave Dowling's course and my course both include Canadian suppliers. And as more and more becoming available, I understand that Dave's course, which is actually running right now, it's too late to get in it. You have to wait till next year. Um he has some new Canadian resources. So if you're one of his students, you need to go in and check that out. All right. So what is this? Oh, so there's the cell packs. Jennifer, fall off the wagon. That's a good way to put it. I fell off the wagon in May. Totally, completely get it. I'll tell y'all that um, facing up to how important sunflowers are to my business, were to my business, is what got me to hire my niece, Kelly, who wanted to be, she was in a big corporate job, had her first baby and bawled her eyes out every day to go back when she had to go back to work. And she sold her new car, got rid of her car and they bought a car that they could afford, you know what I mean? Pay cash for. They got rid of their car, got rid of the car payment, bootstrapped it down, quit her job so she could stay home with her babies and started starting seeds for me. She knew nothing. All she did was she came here one day a week for about eight hours. And all she did, the first job of every day, every Monday, was she started our sunflower seeds. Our sunflower sales more than paid her salary by a long shot. And that's what you have to realize if you're a farmer, <clears throat> seed starting, not all the steps. So I am, so to this day, I don't, I'm not the one that makes all these soul blocks and sows the seeds. Bobo does that. And other people in the past have done it. I care for the seedlings. I'm the one that's watching their progression, controlling temperatures, watering every day. So I can see, oh, what's going to need to be planted? What's having trouble? What do we need to start more of? But that seed starting, the sitting down and doing it is the most time consuming. And that's the job that flower farmers really need to farm out. You need to bring somebody on board that just does that. If you have somebody that likes to knit or do cross stitch, they will love seed starting. It's that same type of repetitiveness, right? Um, so Jennifer, I don't know if you're a flower farmer, but if you are, that's something to think about. All right. So Facebook user, my deer ate every single sunflower I planted. What do you do to keep deer and bunnies away? That's a really great question. And I just had this conversation with another flower farmer. Um, if you, I mean, whether you're a home gardener, an avid gardener or a flower farmer, 
if you don't want to lose stuff to deer, you have to take steps. If you live in a place I can't have deer fencing, deer fencing has to be seven and a half feet tall. Um, well, actually seven feet tall. Half of to the bottom six inches is actually attached to the ground so they can't come under. Um, has to be seven feet tall. Deer can't really see very well from six feet on. And if they can't see the top of the fence, that's what keeps them from jumping. it. They can jump much higher than seven feet, but they don't know where it stops is the problem. So a fence is 100% the most foolproof way. And I highly recommend an experienced deer fence installing company do that for you. There's a lot of decorative ways to do that also. Um, but that's the only foolproof way. And by putting it in correctly, that means that a deer won't get in because of a crummy job and then they can't get out. That's the worst ever or get hurt, which is even the worst. Um, but if you can't do that for whatever reason, um, we deer sprayed for years. Um, and here's the thing about deer sprays. We use three different varieties that had different ingredients. This was Cornell University's. I bet if you search engine Cornell deer spray strategy. I bet it would come up. Um, but it said to pick three different brands that had three different mixes, meaning the ingredients, entered ingredients, and you follow the instructions. I only use deer spray that the instructions said it lasted 30 days. It's the most expensive deer spray, but that's because the inner ingredient that has the sticker, the sticker is what holds the deer spray on the foliage. And cheap sprays wash off with the first rain. The more expensive sprays stay on there. And it says every 30 days. And you better believe, you better put on the first of your month, on the first of the month on your calendar, just like it's a mortgage payment to spray your garden come high water or you know what. Because two days after that 30 days and that stuff washes off, those deer will be there. But you can literally by spraying on a regular 30 day intervals, your deer just kind of give up on your place. That doesn't mean you stop spraying. That just means you don't lose anything. So deer spray. The three that I use, because I'm sure somebody's going to ask, and there may be more out there, is liquid fence, tree guard, and it's a website. And the name of the website is I mustgarden.com like I, the letter I, mustgarden.com. They have a lot of varmint sprays, but I love their deer spray for the growing season because it has kelp in it also. So it actually helps your plants and it there smells really good. It smells like cloves, um, but each month you change. That's what keeps your deer on their toes, right? So hope that helps. Uh, Ruth says it's going to be hot in Colorado. When I think of Colorado, I don't think of heat. I went to Colorado a long, long time ago, arrived in September. It was a dog show, Golden Retriever National Specialty. We pulled in a big RV. I was in shorts. It was a blizzard blowing there. So I don't think of warm. All right. So let's see what this is. How do you rotate them in your farm? Do you pull out the old patch to put the new patch in? That's a great question. Um, so in a nutshell, the first six to eight weeks of sunflowers that get planted are on my big grand scheme plan of planting. You know, I mean, I have designated places for them to go. After that time, literally, I am putting sunflower plantings in where, for instance, if you think about eight weeks after the first sunflower started, that's when cool flowers start. Some of them start petering out. So we're starting to pull some of those, like for instance, stock, which is a, you know, one stem, one flower thing. So the stock bed can be pulled. Well, there's like, because now I only grow, you know, 128 a week. I can put like five weeks of sunflowers in a bed, you know, one after the other. And so there's one bed. So it's like after that point, I'm pulling out other crops and planting in sunflowers. And to answer your question directly, I have and will pull out a crop of sunflowers and plant another crop of sunflowers if I have to, and there's no disease issues. But you're really asking for powdery mill, different types of mildew, which 
um, sunflowers can get. And if you get that, you will not be growing any more sunflowers that year. So you really want to pay attention to that. I try not to grow all of my sunflowers side by side. It happens, as you, I'm sure you'll see in images of mine. But you try to sporadically spread them out across your garden. <laughs> Off subject, but I'm happy to do it. Lisa, can you share tips on trimming your dog's nail? Do you have a favorite tool for that? Much appreciated. So I use the old style guillotine because it's just what I have. Um, but they actually have a new pair. Of, um, there's three different ways that I've done my dog's nails. The guillotine, which is hard for people to use. And you want to know why it's hard for people to use? Most people have it upside down in their hand. I don't have them out here. I'd show you. Um, Suzanne has all my grooming tools to groom her dog. Um, so the guillotine, why people, there's a flat part and then there's a handle on it. Most people hold it with the handle upright. It's the opposite. You turn the flat part up and that makes you not cut it too deep. And I just learned how to do it with the guillotine. So I use that. However, there are also those that look like bypass shears, just like the shears that we use, but they're shorter and they're made for dog nails. That works really well. But I tell you, the best is a Dremel tool. Um, you know, if you ever have the opportunity, this is reason enough to go. If you ever have the opportunity to go to a dog show, not an obedience trial, an all breed dog show, that means that there's grooming areas set up where the dog show people bring in their dogs and fluff them and puff them and all that mess. You can see people grooming their dogs and doing dog toenails, especially with the Dremel tool. And if you're, if it's your breed, you can go over and say and make over and tell them how beautiful their dog is. Give me, show me how you trim nails. Um, and then the other thing is, I have learned that getting a dog up on a grooming table and training my dog to stand still on a grooming table, when you get them up off the floor out of their environment, that changes everything and makes it easier. So hopefully that helps a little bit. All right. Back to flower farming, right? Angie, my first frost date is 18 weeks from now. Should I start my Lizzie seeds now? Well, I'm not a Lizzie seed starter most often, but I don't know when you're planning on planting your Lizzie seed, your Lizzie transplants, but you need to start your Lizzie's about 12 to 18 weeks before you want the transplant. So yes, and Lizzie anthus requires a little cuddling to get started. And most importantly in that is about 65 to 70 degree air temperature, like cool flowers. And that's even, so that means you need to be doing this in your home where you're air conditioned. Um, but yeah, so Lysianthus are just super slow growers. That's why you have to start them so far in advance. And friends, let me tell you, there's a lot of ways to kill a transplant in that many weeks. And Lysianthus are super sensitive to wet feet. So you just have to keep all those things um, in mind. And so we buy in plugs and we have started Lysianthus seed, but I will tell you, I will be starting some Lysianthus seed where it's part of that project I'm doing. So seeing if I can't find any tips for you guys. If the deer munches the top off, but it still has bottom and leaves, should I leave it out or leave it? So 100% depends on if you're talking about sunflowers, I would guess, um, the deer eating them. You need, um, if you're a flower farmer, you need to ditch it and replant. But if you're a home gardener and you just want to enjoy the blooms in your garden, there is a chance that they'll get these little puny side branches and get blooms. Not good enough for cutting typically. Um, but so it depends on what you, um, what your end result or use is. Sorry, y'all. I read, I read a question and get totally derailed here. All right. Word vendor. What triggers you to start seeds two to three per cell, temperature or date? So what she's asking about is the tip I just gave about um, how sunflowers in the long days of summer, which are June and July or late June and July, how the blooms get bigger, even though you're planting them on the same spacing that you got the perfect size sunflower, which are those smaller ones back there. Um, and so I think about what triggers me. It's like, all right, my seeds are 60 days from seed to bloom. When will they be blooming? Oh, heck, that's the middle of July. 
If I want those blooms to be small, I better squeeze them and put two or three. So it's about the bloom time and what the day length is going to be about. Um, the sunflowers right now are just getting huge because the days are so long. Let's see if I can answer this. Lisa, I have Potomac variety of snapdragon seedlings that are about a month old. A couple of rows have the lower leaves on the stem turning red, orange. Any idea what's causing that? I do not know what's causing that. Um, but I'm going to tell you what my theory is about. I'm, I'm sure you listened to mine and Dave Dowling's podcast on Snapdragons, which was just such an eye opener to me. There were so many good tips on there. But I tell you what the problem that I have with these late Snapdragons, like you're growing and I tried to grow. Um, we just didn't pay enough close attention to them. While the snapdragons will grow and elongate under long days, that's the difference in these groups, is they will set blooms and get a little taller in the long days of summer, is I can't, my snaps fall victim to summer problems, thrips, big time. And the heat just was really, really hard on them getting disease, which may be the beginning of what you're seeing. So while I think I want to have a Potomac planting uh, maybe in very early spring, which in the past, my rockets, for instance, which is a different group, um, actually not rockets, opus, which, which bloom really, really early. If I plant um, Potomacs at the same time, they will naturally bloom later. So I don't know what's wrong, but I'm just saying that it might be a disease and it's classic for this time of the year. And if you're hoping for fall blooms, you might just cuddle them a little bit, cool temperatures, you know, keep them not overwatered, but watered and see what happens. Kathy, Lisa, do you bottom water your sunflowers while they're under lights? No, I water from the top. Um, and sometimes if they get too leggy, watering from the top will be a mess, but I don't have any, I don't keep trays to be able to do water, bottom watering. So no, I always water from the top or as I did this morning, I had some that were about this tall and I thought, you know what, if I top water them with the wand, it's going to wipe them out. So I just took the wand and turned it sideways and flooded the tray from the side and that worked really very well. Deborah, my sunflowers didn't come up, planted them twice, West Virginia. Well, Deborah, you don't give the details. Are you starting them indoors or out in the garden? If, you, if you're talking about planting them outside in the garden, that's exactly why we don't do that. It's just very unreliable unless you're really on top of them and protecting them. Um, sunflower seeds are, you know, coveted by squirrels, birds. I mean, so many different varmints out there. Um, and if they didn't germinate inside, did you use a seedling heat mat and do you have viable seeds? Because they are generally not, I don't want to use the word easy, but they usually are, you can get them to germinate. So, um, so great question here, Becky. I purchased the cocoa core yesterday. So the cocoa bricks were part of our show yesterday. Cocoa is a replacement for peat moss and it's a, looks like a brick. Literally, and you drop that into a five, I put it into a five gallon bucket with two gallons of water. And I can almost promise you, you'll have to make more and it expands and then you fluff it all up and it's wonderful. Um, you said it makes two gallons. How long will it last if I use it with soul block and mix? So once it fluffs, once you get the brick to fluff, completely fluff the entire deal. That's why I said use a five gallon bucket so you can get in there and fluff it up. Then you can just let it dry out like peat moss is, and it'll and fluff it each time you do it. You haven't got to do the whole thing, but it won't be hard solid like the brick. Um, and just keep it like sitting in your garage with something sitting on top of it so creatures don't get in it and make a nest, but it's fine. It lasts forever. Um, and the soil blocking instructions calls for 16 cups of, so I think this is what you're asking me, the soil block and recipe calls for 16 cups of peat moss. So this would mean 16 cups of core. And we actually, oh, I don't know where that information is. We did this. We actually, how many recipes would it make? And I'm guessing, I'm guessing two or three at least recipes. Um, so hope that works for you. All right, Pamela. All right. 
I took your advice. Whenever it starts this way, I'm thinking, oh gosh, what did I do? And dropped in on florists with sunflower bouquets. They fell in love with them, ordered sunflowers, picked up a standing order, and they wanted fillers and other flowers. Friends, this is what we're talking about. Congratulations, Pamela. I am so happy for you. Um, so friends, that is one of the things that I read so many sad stories on social media about, I made a cold call and just bad situations. It's all, I mean, have any of you ever tried to ask your dad for some extra special, maybe the car to take out or more allowance for something? Would you ask him right as he walks in the door after a long day at work and he's exhausted? No, you would figure out the best time and way to do that to get the best answer. Well, that's kind of how being in business is. And that's one of the things that I just love sharing with people in flower farming school. Um, and Pamela did it right. Went in with a gift, showing her stuff um, and took the job. Pamela, I'm so proud of you. I can hardly stand it. Sarah, looking at the app now, do the seed packets have days to germination on them? Most of them do. That is something we are like totally revamping our whole line of seeds. If it doesn't say it on there, Sarah, then check our website. Um, <clears throat> and we are working on all, we have so many platforms now from seed packets to the website, to courses, to now the phone app, getting everything in order. And normally they do have days to bloom. Kathy, you mentioned knitting. I'm a knitter and love sewing sunnies and soul blocking. It is my therapy, just like knitting. It is so true, y'all. And you know that our seed packers, we have people that package our seeds. Uh, most of that is done in people's home. They come to the warehouse, pick up their bulk and their instructions and their packets and their labels, and then take them home and pack them. It's the same kind of people. They love counting seeds or weighing seeds. It's, I mean, it's really fun. All right, Virginia. All right, we're coming. We're two minutes over, y'all. I'll take one more question after this. I planted around the sunflowers yesterday and I forgot to put my dry fertilizer in the bed. Do you think I could add it and scratch it in around my seedlings? Um, you're probably not necessary, Virginia. That sounds like a lot of extra work. That's the other thing. Every step you do that you add, it's like, all right, is this really worth it? Or am I just looking for things to do? I do that all the time. <laughs> Sometimes if I have sunflowers that have to be planted, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. The fertilizer spreader is not on the tractor. You know, it's like, all right, I'm tilling this bed and Christine go plant it. We do that. So don't worry about it. Take that off. Check that off your list. All right, so here's a great question, and then I'm out of here. Dana asks, my florist wants pro cuts with heads no bigger than three inches across. How close do I need to plant them in the ground for this? So here would be my thoughts on that. First off, because the days are naturally really short in very early spring, you know, we do the early bird sunflowers, and actually probably through April, all of those, all of those are naturally even smaller. Let's look at some. Let me grab these again. Ugh. So that this is, I would say, three inches. So this happens naturally when you follow what we've always talking about. Five rows, one seed and one cell planted every six inches. Each transplant planted six inches apart in the row, five rows in a 30 inch wide bed. This is what you'll get probably for April and May. Then when June starts, when they start blooming <clears throat> in late June and July, so you're planting those in May, right? The days are getting longer. That's when they start getting bigger and bigger, like this oaf. I mean, this guy is so much bigger than this, right? Look at the difference. Nobody wants this. So... You need to think about, I'm just trying to think, I've never really thought about it like this before. So in late June and July is when they get big because the days are so long, you know, the long days of summer. So you need to count back those weeks that would be blooming in those weeks. Those trays during those weeks when you start them would benefit from having two seeds 
per cell, but plant them on that very same spacing that I just told you. Right. And then as we move into August and the days start shortening again, I think it's July 15th or something, the days start getting a little bit shorter. So those blooms that would be blooming in August, you want to go back to your single seed because they will naturally be smaller. And as we get further, you know, we plant, we risk losing some to an early frost by planting. So these are 60 days, pro cuts are 60 days from seed to bloom, typically, generally speaking. But I keep sowing sunflowers like, 40 days before my last frost, my first frost, risking those last few plantings that they might get taken by frost. But guess what? If they don't, if I decide to row cover them, do you know what it's like to have sunflowers for Thanksgiving, friends? It is like rocking hot <laughs> and they'll be small naturally. So good question. All right, friends, I'm getting off here. Um, thanks for joining me. Remember to go to your app store and get the Gardener's Workshop app. That's what's right there. And open that baby up and you can shop our specials. This is a special week. I was so tired yesterday. I forgot to mention that one of the specials or the offers yesterday was seed only orders have free shipping. That would have normally expired at 8 a.m. this morning. Each week I do my live at 12 noon Eastern time. The offers are available through the night until 8 a.m. Saturday morning, and then they are taken off until the next week. And we have some different specials. Um, but this week, because I forgot to say free shipping on seed only orders, we've extended it until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So you want to check it out. So be sure to get our phone app. You can watch all the replays. And here's the really cool thing, friends, that on the products, I'm just looking for one. Maybe it doesn't show. Wait a minute. On the products in the phone app, I'm looking for one. Oh, I'm annoyed. Wait a minute, y'all. Here we go. When you go see the little vid, see the little video sign right there. That's the bundle from yesterday. That's the DIY soil blocking kit. That if you buy it before eight a.m. tomorrow morning, it comes with three packs of some of my favorite cool flowers. That rose Amazon blue cockadee, pincushion, scabiosis, and my very favorite fever few, Vegimo, sunny, <clears throat> sunny, I think it's called, but it's the pale yellow one. Anyway, you can touch this video and there is a featured live video that you can actually watch. This is, I, my sound is turned down but it brings up the portion of the show where I talk about that product, where I give my tips. Is that not the bomb? I mean, we are so in love with our phone app. It is just totally and completely awesome. Um, so you can go in and do that on all the different seeds. And so by the way, that bundle, which is the DIY kit, the heat mat, and three packs of seeds and reduced shipping is $86.90 plus the shipping charge, which I think would be $7.95. So check it out. All right, friends, I am out of here. See you next week. Um, super stoked over a project I'm working for on. I'm about to bust to tell you, but that's coming. All right, friends, until we meet again, see you next week. And please subscribe and like my channel and share it with your friends. It helps me so much. Ciao.